Welcome to April's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is number of submatrices that sum to target. Given a matrix and a target, return the number of non-empty submatrices that sum to target. A submatrix x1, y1, x2, y2 is the set of all cells with x1 being less or equal to x and less or equal to x2 and y1 being less or equal to y and less or equal to y2. So basically, a submatrix needs to, means that all the cells need to be adjacent to one another. Here in this example, we can have a target of zero, and we have four submatrices that are going to target sum up to a target of zero. But that's because these four are going to be zero itself, and a submatrix can be one uh, one by one matrix. Now you might ask, what about these four combined? Shouldn't that count as a submatrix? But they're not next to each other, so we can't do that. On the other hand, if this 2x2 two two matrix sum, summed up to 0, that would count as a submatrix. So we would have to increase our output by 1. Now, they give you a hint to try using a sliding window, but I'm going to avoid that right now and do a more standard approach. Say that we had just a regular array and we had the same problem. We want to find how many subarrays here equal a target of, say, 7. Now, one way to do that is to find every subarray possible. Start with 1, and then do 1, 2, then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then go to 2, 2, 3, and just sum up all those subarrays and see if any of those equal to target, and increase our output by 1 whenever we find one. But that's going to be n squared. Could we do better than that? Now, one way we can do that is to do a cumulative sum. We'll create a DP array that sums up everything in order. So this is just going to be 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. Now what we can do is do it in one pass. What we'll do is look ahead, um, get our value here, subtract by our target, and see if that value exists in our lookup. So here at the very beginning, we can start with 1. We know that negative 6 doesn't exist, so we just move on. Now with 3, we say, hey, 3 minus 7, does negative 4 equal? Have we seen negative 4 before? No. Continue, then we will continue, continue, until we get to 10. And then we'll say 10 minus 7, have we seen 3 before? And we have, we've seen 3. Now notice that at 3, at this cumulative sum, it's basically what totaled up here, right? And we're calculating everything that came up to here. So that this is going to be 7. Like, sure, if we got all this, it's going to equal 10. But if we just subtract up to the point that we've seen here, that's going to be 3, so it's going to equal target 7. So now we can increase if we start output by 1, and this is now going to be done in one pass. It's going to be O of n. So in the same way, we can do this approach with a 2D array. The only difference is going to be that we will have to calculate every subarray possible for the x-axis and do this same approach for everything in our y-axis. So we'll have to figure out every single uh, subarray. We'll start with 1 and then 1, 2, 1, 3. But for every single uh, row, we can do this in one pass in the same fashion. We can find our cumulative sum and put it to a lookup and see have we seen at this point, subtract by target, have we seen that before? If we have, we increase our output by whatever we've, how many times we've seen that already. So let's begin by initializing our NNM. That's just going to be the length of the matrix, zero. Oops. And this is going to be the length of matrix. Also, want to initialize our output. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is create our DP array, and we can actually do that right here with the matrix itself. There's no indication that we can't do that. So let's go with four row in matrix. We are going to for i in range of one to the length of the row. We're just going to add up everything here with ri being plus equal to ri minus 1. So now we have all the information for our cumulative sum inside our matrix. Now we're going to do a nested for, for loop. And I'm going to make it a little more readable. We'll say for start in range of n and for end in range of n, or I'm sorry, start to n. We have to have a couple things now. We have to have our lookup. This is going to be a default dictionary well as our cumulative sum, which starts with 0. 
Now one thing we have to note is we need to initialize lookup 0 to equal 1 and that's because if this value right here already equals you know 0 so say that 0 minus 0 is already in there we need to make sure that we have some value in there to add to add to our output so now we're going to do so this part right here is doing it for every single subarray possible so that's n squared but for this part we can do this in one pass with 4k let's say in range of m what I'm going to do is calculate our cumulative sum and we're going to increase this every time by calculating the matrix let's see k end subtracted by the matrix of k start uh, and one thing to note is I have to do minus one because that starting point I need to do one one below that now one thing to note though here is uh, we could get out of bounds here if we start with zero so just to avoid that I'm going to say if start does not equal zero then we can do this otherwise use zero okay so next thing we do is we're going to see if we've seen this before so if comes cumulative sum minus target is in lookup then increase our output by whatever many times we've seen so lookup sum minus target and every single time we're going to do this we're going to add to our lookup we'll sum that we've seen so far we're going to add one to it finally at the very end we return our output so let's see if this works okay it looks like it's working let's go ahead and submit that and accepted so time complexity wise it's going to be n squared because of this nested for loop as well as times m so n squared m we do use some space because of our our lookup so i believe that's going to be equal to m times n squared as well now this solution i don't know if it's the most optimal um, but i found it the most understandable so i'm going to go with this there probably are some better solutions out there but this is already complicated enough so hopefully this helps and yeah, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.